The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 878 Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. You can now purchase the Tao of Self-Confidence, a guide to moving beyond trauma and awakening the leader within on Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, Walmart, Indigo, and other major book retailers. Get your copy today. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan. And today I have an amazing woman on the show today. She's a chief product and marketing officer, and I'm super excited to have her on today to share her story and wisdom on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Vidya Srinivasan. Vidya, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Hi, Sheena. Uh, great to be here. Vidya Srinivasan, I head up uh, product and marketing here at Magnet. Just a little bit about me. I'm, uh, you know, a proud mom of, 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 you know, a 19 year old who goes to University of Chicago, and and a wife for my amazing husband, who are my support system for me as 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 we go, as I navigate my journey through both personal and work. But yeah, excited to be here and share some of my experiences uh, in this process with Sheena. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Vidya, what's your cultural background? Yeah, I'm a person of uh, Indian, Indian origin, so Asian Indian woman, born in Chennai, South India, but uh, came over to the United States uh, as part of my educational endeavors. Thanks for sharing that. And what be your favorite self-confidence quote? I have a few, but but I'm going to pick the one that probably is closer to how I think of myself day in, day out. The one with uh, Tina Fey which is don't waste your energy trying to change opinions, do your thing and don't care if they like it. It's just sort of very symbolic in the way, you know, I live every day sort of because we all have experiences or people we interact with depending on our workplace or personal life. And at the end of the day, we need to be true to who we are and what we believe in. So that quote sort of I felt like was a self-reflection of who I am as a person. So that's that's what I navigate to. Thanks for sharing that. And I love that. And I know sometimes it's easier said than done, especially as Asian women. You know, we've been taught to live a certain way, be a certain way. And we deal with a lot, right? We We sometimes care about what other people think of us or, you know, we have to serve everyone else before we take care of ourselves. And it's important to just show up as our authentic self because, you know, that's how we can live life according to our terms to be genuinely happy and be able to help others in the process. So I love that quote that you mentioned. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? You know, it's it's really about, not to use the word confidence again, but really certain about who I am as a person and be true to the true to self. I think that's the only thing that keeps me going. So I, I certainly is something that I instill in, instilled in my daughter when she was growing up, because as you said, one with the uh, Asian Indian, you know, heritage coming as, you know, immigrants into a country as well as being a woman in a workplace. And, you know, I grew up sort of a, as a software engineer. So as I grew up, you know, there was, you know, not as many women with whom I worked. So really making sure that at any point in time, I was true to who I am and have being certain of everything I did for myself, as opposed to, you know, kind of going back to Tina Fey quote, not for somebody else. I think that's kind of, and every step of the way when you make progress, that kind of boosts your self-confidence. So that's kind of how I live. I love that great definition. So thanks for sharing that. And Vidya, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? I'm going to give you a little bit of background of, you know, how I, my childhood and how I grew up an Indian household and not to age myself, but a long time ago, like 20, 25 years ago, you know, any decision you make was questioned and being a female and the oldest one in the family everything was sort of like looked upon was a spotlight and you had to make the right decisions. And there was a certain definition of what a girl would do versus a boy would do in sort of the Asian, you know, household, at least the Indian household that we all grew up in that I can, I can think, think back on. So 
everything was sort of a revolutionary conversation in my family with my parents. So for me, it, it all boiled down to making sure that, again, very young age, I realized I know what I want to do. And it may not have been very futuristic, you know, as the age, uh, as you grow older, but it's definitely something that I struggled with. But then what I learned over each of those struggles or debates or arguments uh, in decision making was that don't be afraid to make mistakes. Uh, And as long as you know what you want to do, and you pick the option that you want to do, own it, just do it and accept whatever the outcome is. And that's how you sort of build on the confidence and and know that, okay, you know what, I have a gut feel, and I know what I want to do. So I'm going to go do it no matter who who says what, Uh, as much as it was a very, you know, growing up, it was hard, but I think it also helped prove my self confidence and and who I am as a person to my family, as well as everybody around me outside, outside the family. So certainly a good experience. Thanks for sharing that. And I love how you mentioned like, you know, trusting our gut because it's, I know sometimes it's easier said than done. And there's times where I didn't listen to my, my instincts. And then, you know, I just fell flat on my face not realizing that we have more intuition that we realize. And sometimes we don't trust ourselves because of, you know, the self-esteem issues, the cultural upbringing. And this is why it's so important to work on ourselves every single day so we can see our worth and be the person that we are today. And, you know, what was that point in your life, especially, you know, you, you're an engineer, you're a chief marketing officer. I mean, you know, there, there's a report from catalyst.org that mentioned that, you know, Asian women represented only 2.7% in, you know, high corporate roles in 2021, which is a very small number. And so what was that aha moment in your life when you realized you were more than enough to go out there and, you know, be in a high position, be in a path that's not always typical for Asian women? What was that aha moment for you? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, to kind of tie back to what you said just now, which is, I think part of why women and Asian women in general, I I feel like we are pretty hard on ourselves in how we evaluate ourselves compared to the others. And I noticed, you know, the first thing was, you know, it was okay to be wrong. It was okay to fail at times, as long as you have the drive to go do what you want to do. And the second sub tone to that or undertone to that was what I, you know, the um, let's not overanalyze and be critical of what we can do or cannot do, because there are people with less capabilities that end up doing things that we with our set of you know competencies and a little bit of little bit more of self confidence could just conquer the world in a lot a lot better way than anybody else can so it was a real balance of thought process to say i can do it i know i want to do it it's just that let's reduce the amount of over analysis that we do and the criticality that we put on ourselves and really focus on what could go wrong, right? Let's go get it done. And if if we fail, then we learn from that experience. So that was sort of the aha moment when I first took that step to say, hmm, maybe I'm ready, maybe I'm not, but let's let's shoot for it. So that's kind of the approach I I took it over the, you know, I would say the past five, six years and opportunities that came. And I, you know, I'm I'm very glad I did those. I am so glad you did it as well because you know, in general, women face a huge confidence gap over men. And it's for this very reason, the overanalysis, f- feeling we have to be 110% ready, not realizing not realizing men are like 20% ready, and they're just going to go for it. And whether they get it or not, they're glad that they just went for it. Sometimes we see failure as like the end of everything, not realizing it's just feedback, and we can always learn from it. And I know sometimes it's easier said than done when you come from a culture where it's like, you had to get good grades. You always had to be the top of everything. You always had to be the perfect daughter, wife, a mother, which really takes a toll on us, right? Thinking that we have to live up to this unrealistic standard of of of, of a woman. And so I really love that analogy that you mentioned, you know, you're just going to go for it. You didn't die. You're still standing. And it also led you to all the amazing opportunities that you have today. And because of that realization, what's your life been like now? 
I think I've grown stronger as a person, you know, as a, as a, as a wife and, you know, my, my husband jokingly says I'm, he's my trophy husband. <laughs> so it's, it's always, you know, it's good. And, you know, I think my, my parents really now see, you know, at times I do take, I do take the opportunity to tell them, you know, the struggles uh, early in the childhood, just as a, as a fun fact, but no, I think I've grown, you know, for my daughter, as she enters, she's a sophomore in, in, in college, as she enters the workplace and does what she wants to do, I feel like I can be a better mom, better female colleague, uh, you know, in helping her kind of grow into the woman that I, you know, that she, you know, she needs to be to be successful in her life. So as a person, you know, stronger as a person, wife and a mom. And then, you know, workplace, it kind of reflects, you know, with the confidence that you can get things done, just creates a stronger image of of yourself. And I got to say, if for the listeners, it's certainly worth the journey and the effort to really invest in self-confidence, especially for women, and not doubt yourself when everybody else is doubting you. I love that. And thanks for sharing that. And you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey to self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? Know what you want and go get it. Never doubt yourself because, you know, women are, I think this the sixth sense or instinct or gut, whatever you, you think of that is pretty strong in women. And I think we are in our own way of progress. So if we can get through that part and you know exactly what you want, I think any, you know, we can go get it. I love that tip. I just, that should be a slogan. Know what you want and just go get it. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing to it, nothing more to it, you know? Yeah. it's. I know it's simple. It's not easy. It's a simple process, but it's not easy. But if it was easy, everyone would be doing it, right? And so this is why it takes a lot of a mindset shift, a different perspective to go out there and get the things that we want in our life. And as women, you know, the more we go out there and just become go-getters and be able to take up space, like imagine how much we can, we can achieve. So I love that tip. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yeah, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn at uh, Vidya Srinivasan. So if you look for the profile, that's, that's where you can find me. I'm also on Instagram, not as active. I kind of follow my daughter. So, <laughs> uh, but uh, otherwise, mostly uh, on LinkedIn and Twitter or X, I should say, where, where I'm pretty active. Thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Vidya, you can also head on over to the selfconfidence.com and search for Vidya's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I really just want to thank Vidya today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Vidya. Appreciate it, Sheena. Pleasure to a pleasure to be here. And yeah, for any of yours wanting to talk to me more about it, happy to share some of my experiences. Not a problem. It was such an honor to have you on the show, Vidya. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of The Tao of Self-Confidence. You can order your copy of Asian Women Who Boss Up Book by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.